Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. We got the lock, it's just really slow. I think we keep this and just like pray for ramp because we have. Yoshi Aethrio's sack outlet. Like, this is the lock. Blood crypt, untapped. Inquisition. Ha ha! <laughs> the world's most expensive hand wins again. Excellent. <laughs> well, uh, that's upside of having the most expensive hand in the world. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had a Theros Beyond Death Gods in Modern Against Odds poll, and in that, it was our new Buy a Box promo, Aetherios the Shroud Veil that came out on top. So today, we are heading to Modern to play a deck that's looking to lock our opponent out of the game with the help of Aetherios and some cool shenanigans, putting coin counters on things, getting things back from the graveyard on repeat, sacrificing them for value. So that's our plan for today. Let's talk about the deck, jump into the gameplay, starting with Aetherios itself. So Aetherios, the centerpiece of our deck, it can be a creature, being indestructible is nice. The big deal, though, and the ability we're trying to abuse with Aetherios is on our end step, we put a coin counter on something, and then when something with a coin counter dies, we can return that creature to the battlefield under our control. So Aetherios, it's somewhat similar to like Micaiah Sun Hollow, somewhat similar to Nightmare Shepherd, but Aetherios has one big advantage over other similar creatures that allow you to get yourself back from the graveyard, and that is Aetherios can do this turn after turn after turn after turn with the same creature. Like Micaiah's or Nightmare Shepherd, you get to reuse your creature once, but once it's gone, it's gone. So that's what sets Aetherios apart, and that's what our deck is built around. So for Aetherios to work, we gotta get out on the battlefield. We're playing modern, modern's fast, modern's powerful, so we need ramp. We can't just make land drops up to six mana cast Aetherios. Here we have Mindstone, just ramps us at two. Heartless Summoning, though, is our best ramp spell. Yes, it gives all of our creatures negative one, negative one, a slight deck building restriction, but we had a bunch of big creatures anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Making our creatures cost two less, though, is a huge deal. That means all of a sudden Aetherios is four mana, and when you see the rest of our creatures, you will realize they are very expensive, so sometimes it can even ramp us multiple times in the same turn. We also have some additional creaturey reps. So Solemn Simulacrum, Goalless Tireless Pilgrim, work well with our Heartless Summoning and our Mind Stone. We play them early in the game, keep ramping by tutoring lands out, but they're also rap spells that work insanely well with Aetherios because in the late game, once we get Aetherios down, we can start coin countering like Solemn, sacrifice it to something, we draw a card when it dies, comes back into play, get another land out of our act, keep doing that over and over and over again. While not as game ending as some of our other coin counter loops, they are nice value loops to keep us churning through our deck, thinning lands out of our deck, ramping, ramping, ramping. For these loops to work though, we need sacrifice outlets. That's the other key piece of this puzzle. So to actually combo off with this deck and hardlock our opponent out of the game, we need three things. We need Aetherios, number one. We need a free sack outlet. So for this, we have Woe Strider and Yagma Thran Physician, uh, basically just sack a creature for free. They have other upsides, drawing cards, maybe scrying, being cheap with our Heartless Summoning, surviving Heartless Summoning, but essentially they just sacrifice something for free. And then the last piece of the puzzle is Yoshi the Morning Star. So Yoshi, this weird old Kamigawa Spirit Dragon, and when it dies, we get to make our opponent skip their next untap step and also tap five of their permanents. So this is the hard lock of the deck. And this is what we're really trying to set up to do. We get down Aetherios. We have a sack outlet like Yagmoth or Rose Rider. We get down Yoshi. We go to our end step. On our end step, we put the coin counter on Yoshi. Then we sacrifice Yoshi to tap our opponent out for the next turn. But Yoshi comes back into play thanks to Aetherios. So then the next turn, we can attack, do whatever we want to do, go to our end step, put the coin counter on Yoshi, sack Yoshi, tap our opponent out again. So so essentially, once we get this set up, our opponent just never gets another turn. I mean, technically they do get a turn, but they're tapped out. They can't really do anything with a turn. So then we just beat our opponent down with our random janky board of Aetherioses and Woe Strider Yoshis while keeping our opponent from ever being able to play magic with this loop. We also have some other sweet things that kind of do similar shenanigans with Aetherios. Platinum Angel with a coin counter. Really hard to ever lose the game. Like, opponent kills it, it comes back into play, put a coin counter on it again, gonna be hard to ever die. Runes Card Demon, tutors up like our Yoshi, our Aetherios, Rios, Ashen Rider does a lot of exiling, coming into play and leaving play. If we can get this set up with Aetherios and a Salcat, uh, we get to exile two of our opponent's permanents, any permanents, even lands every single turn until they just got nothing left. 
So that's the plan of the deck. We also have Path to Exile. This is how we can yoink our opponent's creatures, put a coin counter on it, path it. We gain control of it rather than having to go to Exile. Mana base wise, Cataracts is to activate our Golos. Murin is a backup sack outlet that we can tutor up with Golos, works with Yoshi and Atreos and all that stuff, a field of ruin, and then just a bunch of mana fixing lands. As far as the sideboard, we get a few more shenanigans. In control matchups, Mind Slicer can empty our opponent's hand and come back into play, so we got a threat with the help of our Atreos. Linvinia is a good way to gain life against aggro. Full Minator Mage, infinite land destruction, very slow, like one at a time every single turn. But once we start coin countering it, we can just pull up a land every single turn gonna make it hard for our opponent to do anything if they're trotting or controlling otherwise a bunch of hate cards for combos some discard a sweeper for aggro and that is Aethrios for modern Aethrios hardlock and that is our against the odds deck for this week so let's jump in the games see how it works thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy the gameplay and i'll be back in a bit with a wrap up all right against the odds time we are Aethrios locking in modern and uh, we got the lock it's just really slow i think we keep this and just like pray for ramp because we have yoshi atrios sack outlet like this is the lock the question is are we gonna get to uh cast it in time something like heartless summoning would be nice catacombs opponent cracks it blood crypt untapped inquisition Ha ha! <laughs> the world's most expensive hand wins again. <laughs> well, uh, that's upside of having the most expensive hand in the world. Inquisition proof. Ugh, ugh. Uh, Aethrios is a bit awkward in the fact that we're playing four of them, and they are pretty bad when you draw out three of them. <laughs> They're indestructible. They're six mana. Like, ugh. Another Aethrios is definitely the worst, the worst card we could draw. Ramp, please? Um... Snow covered planes go. Abooted. Combat. Goif. Hits us. Out 18. More Goifs. Marsh flats go. Well, the ramp dream has not come together yet. Opponent. If they ever can grow these Goifs, we, we die super quick. Well, hand is even more expensive than the first time you looked. <laughs> so, Inquisition still not helping you. <laughs> Fold it. Hits us. Well, crack Marsh flats. 17. 13. Dowd to 13, a tap, snow-covered planes, well, prismatic vista, crack it. Yeah, I don't think starting to cast things on turn four is super likely to lead to wins in modern, but we're going to find out. We will cast creature one, Yagmoth, past the turn. Technically able to block a goif at the moment. Opponent goes to combat. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think if our opponent had a bolt, they would have cast it to grow their goifs. Oh, they have teamer battle rage. All right. Yeah, well, uh, good game. Get rid of a goif. Marsh flats, go. Crack, godless shrine tapped, and dead. Down to four. Yes, that would have been sweet if we'd run some ramp. Well, Yoshi time. Pass the turn. Are we dead? Right now, Yoshi actually can stop the Tarmogoyf. If our opponent has another teamer battle rage. Wow, passes, okay. A land would actually be kind of nice. Opponent passes. Well, Aethrios. We are missing the sack outlet, though. No attacks. Coin up Yoshi. Okay. I mean, maybe there's hope. Maybe there is hope. Pwn it. Combat. Passes. We adapt. We draw. Marsh flats. Hmm. Oh, I don't want to go to three, because then we died a bolt. Ugh. Yeah, I don't want to crack the marsh flats. Planet Manger would be sweet, but it's so risky. Bolt is a card this deck would play, I think. Hmm. Oh, they might actually not have bolts. Ugh. Ugh. It's so hard to tell. We're gonna we're gonna go for it. We didn't come here to wimp out in the face of lightning bolts. Uh snow covered swamp. Platinum Angel? I mean Platinum Angel with a coin counter is pretty good. Resolves. Coin it. No removal. Please. <laughs> Come on, give us a coin. Oh, interesting. Drown in the lock on Yoshi. Well, that's fine. I think we're actually going to win now. We get to tap our opponent down. Okay. And opponent scoops it up. Oh my goodness, we won. I cannot believe that hand. <laughs> wow. I cannot believe that hand worked. 
We played that as fairly as possible, and our opponent played two early goives and a Teamer Battle Rage, and and we just cast four drop, six drop, six drop, seven drop, and it was enough somehow. Oh my goodness! Uh, well, that is shocking that ac that actually worked. Uh, okay. Well, I mean that was good. Do we want to change anything? We could mind slicer. Brutality doesn't seem like it kills anything. I wonder if lane lines are worth it. I'm assuming since they're four colors, they're probably a Traverse the Uvenwald build. It does slow down Tarmogoyfs. You know, maybe we maybe we bring them in. Maybe we bring them in. We don't have. Uh, we can go down a Golos. We can go down a Yagmoth. We can go down a Platinum Angel and go up three lane lines. All right. Yeah. Try it like that. It keeps Goyf under control. It stops Traverse. Maybe it's worth it. Yeah. All right. Awkward mana, but we will keep. Well, now we want to not draw a line. <laughs> if it's not our opening end, we don't want to draw it. Well, it's about to die. Polluted Delta. And Bazos. Well, land go. Getting two white mana for pass would be helpful in this matchup, I assume. Opponent cracks Delta. But having two pass is nice. Opponent. Blood gripped. Breeding pool. Untapped. Bazos. Come on, white mana. A3Os. Well, ugh, this mana's looking rough. Mindstone go. Once upon a time, number two. Whiffs? Wait, did our opponent just whiff on once upon a time? Oh! Yes! <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Some of these spells are whiffable, like uh, like the historic one, uh, Board the Weatherlight. That's whiffable. When you can hit a creature or a land, you either got to have built your deck very awkwardly or get incredibly unlucky to straight up whiff on Once Upon a Time. And our opponent, uh, Shame Scoop, as a result. <laughs> Well, get him, Atrios. We got the lock in game one and the free win in game two. I cannot believe we won that match. My mind is pretty blown. That first hand, there is no way that should have worked. <laughs> Just casting our stuff naturally with no ramp. But it did, and we assembled the lock and the Platinum Angel lock. And then our opponent just, <laughs> just whiffed. Well, we'll take it. Sweet, sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are Atriosing in modern and this and if we can stick our heartless summoning looks pretty good i mean heartless summoning ramp ramp who and the woe strider all right i mean this hand has potential we'll see what our opponent's doing hopefully it's yeah a blood moon deck maybe we don't really care too much about blood moon mindstone all right so some sort of rampy red deck a uh, crag marsh flats get a yeah let's go snow covered swamp play it safe with blood moon potentialities um, Marsh Flats, crack it. Snow Covered Swamp number two, I think. And Heartless Summoning, pass the turn. All right, well, we get to start ramping. Now we need an Aetherios. We have Woe's Rider. We have stuff to sack. All we really want is an Aetherios now. Snow Covered Mountain, Blood Moon Us opponent, Blood Moon Us. <laughs> Season Pyromancer, sure. Opponent's probably going to have some big things we got to deal with at some point. All right, gets a dork and astrolabe. Five color mono red. Uh, well, marsh flats, crack it. Gonna stick with the basics for now. Snow covered planes. Play solemn. Get a snow covered. I guess it doesn't matter at this point. Planes. Woe strider. Goat dies and pass the turn. All right, a three o's. A three o's. All right, forest walk bastion. Uh-oh, that's a lot of mana. Is this a huge... Yeah, it's a dragon. All right, all right, all right. Well, we are going to need to find an answer for that at some point. Pwnit gets in, gets in, gets in. Hmm. Um, well, block and block. We can't path that either, which is problematic. We draw land. Well, one, two, three. Golos. Get a land. It will be Cascading Cataracts. Mirin. Solemn, get a land. Snow covered swamp. Who oh, pass the turn? Oh man, our deck is functioning pretty well, but the storm breath is something that's very concerning because it could just kill us. And if our opponent has another big flyer, it gets even sketchier. We need our Aetherios. We need our Aetherios badly. Bolts Golos. Oh no. All right, that's bad. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that is the disaster outcome here. Opponent combat gets in. 
Hits us. Down to nine. I guess ugh, Yoshi would be good, too. <laughs> Yagmoth. We'll play Yagmoth. Marsh Flats. Crack it. Snow Covered Swamp. Woe Strider. Get back, Woe Strider. Pass the turd, but there's a store breath. Pwn it. Zach's Relic to draw a card. Land. One card in hand. What is it? <laughs> Please not more big dragons. Yeah, protection from white's actually really bad for us. Lightning bolts are Woe Strider. Well, we will sack it. Counter on Storm Breath. Draw another not super helpful land. Turns on. Eh, that doesn't do anything. We can block that. Opponent combat gets in. Attacks, attacks. And we will block. Drop to four. Untap. Another Heartless Summoning. Well, we will. Hmm. How do we do this? Oh, we got nothing in hand. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. One, two, three. Hmm. I feel like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think we have to kill Storm Breath. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Storm Breath is like uniquely problematic. Well, make some black mana. Discard a card. Proliferate. Discard a card. Proliferate. Discard a card. Kill Storm Breath. Pass the turn. I mean, we found a way to kill a Storm Breath, but we're still in a pretty sketchy spot. Pota adapts. Draws for the turn. Astrolabe is a redraw. Into Storm Breath, and we're dead. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that is annoying. Storm Breath in specific is just, like, absurd against our deck. And we had a good start, too. We just did not find a way to deal with those Storm Breaths. Ugh. Well, unfortunately, like, Linvala isn't even that good. I guess we got to bring in Dead of Winter? Dead of Winter is, like, kind of an answer. Oh, we were so close. All right. Oh, well, I liked how our deck ran there. It's just unfortunate that our opponent's playing all pro-white threats, and most of our ways of stopping those happen to be white, like big white flyers, Path to Exile, etc., and we never found Aethrios. We just didn't find it to set up the lock. All right, opponent. Consider your sideboard plan, and let's do it. All right, so we are on the play. And we got our threats, but we don't have ramp. I don't think we can keep this. Well, unfortunately, this we are going to keep. We need to draw land, though, for this to do anything. We'll see. If we draw land, this hand's good. We have Heartless Summoning and Mind Stone. Opponent. Snow-Covered Mountain. Relic of Progenitus. Land, please. All right, that's a land. So, shock ourselves, sadly. Heartless summoning. Go. Well, that's good. We are going to get to do things now, thankfully. Drawing more lands would be fine. Opponent, land, and passes. Well, we will just solemn. Uh, grab a snow-covered plains for blood moon purposes. Pass the turn. And then we get to Golos. And then we're not that far from Ashen Rider, although Ashen Rider still doesn't kill. All right, Season Pyromancer. Although Ashen Rider still doesn't kill... Or block Stormbreath Dragon. All right, opponent, discard stuff, makes elementals. Uh, we will play Mindstone, Solemn, Snow Covered. Um, hmm. Yeah, I could take a Plains. Blood Moon's going to be good against us regardless, I think. Pass the turn. Well, we would like an Aethrios. Aethrios would be sweet. And no Blood Moon does mean we get to Ashen Rider. Astrolabe draws a card. And, all right, Cash is in the Relic. Opponent's trying to find Lance, finds a Frostwalk Bastion. Goes attacking. Um, yeah, let's block. We have enough action. If we find Aethrios, we're going to have stuff to do with it. All right, opponent spends a bolt to keep alive their dork. We get to draw, ooh, Dead of Winter. And there's Aethrios. Hmm. Well, I think we start with Ashen Rider. Actually, how much mana do we have? Aethrios is four. One, two, three, four. Golos is five. Yeah, let's Marsh Flats, Snow Covered Swamp, Ashen Rider. Get rid of Frostwalk Bastion. Keep our opponent low on mana. Okay. Pass the turn. Well, if we draw land next turn, we can Aethrios and Golos. If not, we can Aethrios and Path. And our opponent's low enough on mana, we don't have to worry about a Storm Breath this turn. Opponent untaps. Scrying Sheets, number two. And Chandra. All right, kills Ashen Rider, so we will get rid of Chandra. Well, now we would like to just draw land. Opponent. It's in hits us down to 11. Untap. Path. Well, 
Do we have to Aethrios? All right, I. F Ugh. This is tough. The problem is we're down to eleven, and our opponent could be getting to the Hasty Dragon part of the game. Yeah. All right. Play Aethrios. Pass the turn. Can we stay alive? Yeah. No counter. Uh. Season Pyromancer. We'll get the counter, which isn't bad. Even just putting counters on our opponent's creature is pretty good. So we can path it and steal it. There's Storm Breath. Uh, we might have to. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Well, this is unfortunate, but path Season Pyromancer. Steal Season Pyromancer. Ugh, discard, discard. Eh, Runescar Demon's interesting. Well, we'll see. We will see. This is close. Boat it. Combat. Gets in with everything. Well, block with Season Pyromancer. Drop to six. Untap. Ooh, Woe Strider 2. We're so close to setting up the lock. We just have to not die. All right, one, two, three. One, two, three. Hmm. No, one, two. All right, play Prismatic Vista. Dead of Winter. Crack Prismatic Vista. Go to five. Woe Strider. Well, we'll see. Counter on Woe Strider. Pass the turd. Uh, no more dragons. Pwn it. Passing? All right. Pwn it passes. <gasps> Yoshi. That's what we were hoping for. That is exactly what we were hoping for. Well, play Yoshi. And let the lock begin, hopefully. Uh, yeah, no attacks. End of turn. No removal, please. <laughs> I don't know what they could have that's going to ruin this. We have the lock set up. This is what we've been playing for. We need to get the coin counter on the Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no screds. Hopefully our opponent's just activating scrying sheets. That would be that would be fine. Did we get the lock? Did we actually get there through a store breath? All right, coin on Yoshi. Oh, they have the scred. All right, so opponent sort of stays alive. We get to tap them out for the turn. Gets back season pyromancer. Opponent fizzles our Aethrios. Well, we'll see about it. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Snow-covered mountain. Combat. Attacks. I don't think we want to go to three because of Bolt. So we will block. We get back our Woe Strider anyway. Goat dies. Go to four. Untap. Um, Runescar Demon. Tutor. Four. I guess it's got to be Yoshi again. Yeah, I mean, try to reassemble. Mindstone. Pass the turn. Do they have more Screds? No attacks. Coin on Runescar Demon. Please no. Please not again. Oh, jeez. Well, all right. If our opponent has a hasty dragon, we're dead. Hawk. Oh, oh, no. Oh, well, I guess we can see the downside of Aethrios is, boy, it is a little bit on the slow side. Opponent. I mean, we are going to block because going to three means we just died a lightning bolt. And we're still really close to having this lock set up. And we can woe strider again. Opponent gets in. Oh, if they draw graveyard hate. All right, block. Trying to avoid going to three, stay at four, opponent passes. Well, Woe Strider, exile some stuff, get back Woe Strider. Go, dies. Yoshi, <laughs> pass the turn. If they have another removal spell, I'm going to cry. <laughs> End of turn. Let's try this again. Coin on Yoshi. Come on, come on. Come on, deck. <laughs> Third time's the <a> charm. <laughs> Is this Cred 3? Okay, it's Lightning Bolt Woe Strider. All right, well, that does shut down the lock, and it does mean we're dead to Storm Breath. Ugh, so much. Well, good thing we kept ourselves from going to... If they top deck Storm Breath, I'm going to... Oh, it's not a snow-covered land. If it's Storm Breath. Okay, opponent passes. Okay, we get to try again. We get to get back Woe Strider. Um, yeah, let's... Yeah, get back, Woe Strider. Go, dies. Go to combat. Attack you with Yoshi. Hit our opponent. Sack Yoshi. Tap you down. Yoshi comes back. We scry. Um, Woe Strider bottom. End of turn. Coin on Yoshi. Sack Yoshi. Tap you down. Oh, we got it. Okay. Lock has officially been assembled. And now we should be good. Opponent. Yeah, scry sheets, that's fine. So now our opponent's just tapped out for the rest of the game, though. Scry, Woe Strider. 
Cascading Cataracts to the bottom. All right, pass the turn. I think we got it. We got the lock set up. It took some doing, but this is what we've been playing for. This is the exact game state. Opponent. Passes. Crack Mindstone, draw a card. Ooh, Platinum Angel, too. Crack Mindstone, draw a card. Heartless Summoning. Well, play Heartless Summoning. Turns on Aetherios. Go to combat. Attack with everything. Hit ya. Play Platinum Angel. End of turn. Counter on Yoshi. Sack it. Tap you out again. Oh, all right. We did it. We finally did it. All right. And now the lock is assembled, and our opponent should not have a way to get out of this. Where even if they go Mountain Lightning Bolt, we're not dead. We have Lethal on board. And that is what A3Os can do. That is exactly what we were trying to set up with this deck. That is it. And a post scoops it up. Okay. Whoo. Well, that's what the deck can do in the, in the right matchups. Lock them out of the game altogether. That went pretty well. I am still mortified <laughs> of Storm Breath Dragon. That is just a really annoying card for our deck to deal with. Uh, I guess a lock does sort of deal with it, but <laughs> all right, run it back. I mean, that was good though. That was that was the dream lock. We managed to get it assembled, and it's actually pretty good once it gets assembled. Like it should be most decks in the format. Just not being able to untap. It's kind of like build your own stasis almost with four cards that cost six or seven mana. But <laughs> stasis and modern <laughs> got him. <sighs> seven mana, three card stasis lock. <laughs> Oh, this we got against odds. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to keep this. We have our worst ramp spell, but this hand has a lot of ramp and it has Aetherios Yoshi. Like, hand's not bad. Hand's not bad. Sis is assuming we draw another land or even better, Heartless Summoning. Heartless Summoning would be so good. Snow Covered Mountain and Astrolabe. Sure. All right, play the land. I mean, Will Strider's okay. We can sack the goat to look for lands at some point if we don't draw them. Although we would rather just draw them. Snow-covered mountain. Relic of Progenitus. Well, play the land. Mindstone goo. Land. Give us a land. Opponent. Simeon Spirit Guide. Uh-oh. Chandra. Karn. All right. Well, Karn draws cards, but it's not as immediately threatening as Chandra, I don't think. Hmm. Well, Mindstone number two. I mean, I guess this is still fairly threatening. Our opponent can just make some big constructs and attack us to death, uh, especially with this many artifacts. We're probably going to have to... Yeah, all right. Now, this isn't exciting, giving our opponent a land, but I think we have to not die two constructs. That's goal one. <laughs> opponent does have Storm Breath mana, though. Card struck, achieve. Opponent passes. Lands, please? A three O's. well... We're going to get lands the hard way, I guess. Solemn. Snow-covered plains. Go. Opponent exiles our path. I mean, our opponent is down to one card, although they are going to refuel with Karns and Mind Stones, presumably. Opponent takes up card. Anger the gods in mountain. Well, you can have the mountain. Plays a snow-covered mountain. Two cards in hand. Astrolabe draws a card. I mean, if we draw a land, we get to just play Aetherios. That's not the worst. And it does protect against exiling, too. I kind of feel like we got to take the hit this turn if we have the option. Oh, no. Ugh, Chandra. All right. Things are getting worse. Ill Solemn. We draw a card. Solemn. All right. Hits us. Down to 15. But our opponent has two card drawing Planeswalkers now. Exile Solemn. Sure. And we're not hitting lands. Ugh. All right. There's a land. We'll play the land. Prismatic Vista. Crack Prismatic Vista. Snow Covered. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, I guess we just have to Yoshi. Pass the turn. We're still pretty far away from setting up our combo, unfortunately. Astrolabe grows the construct. We just can't take too many hits from this construct is the issue. Like, we're going to have to... Uh, we'll see. Like, this construct is going to kill us really quickly. That is the issue. So I don't know how many hits we can take until we have to start chump blocking. The answer is probably very, very few. Like, I don't even know if we can take this one, honestly. Although we do kind of need to kill the Planeswalker. But we should probably just cash in Karn. Like, I don't know if we can beat two 7-7s. Seven in a perfect world, we draw land and get to Solemn Most Rider. And then we do sort of have a shot to, like, jump block for the turn. Jump block for the turn. Get down Aetherios and just have the lock going. That would probably be our ideal turn here. Preferably a non-pain land, because our life total. Sketchy. What do you got about it? Uh, I think they have Scred, and they're trying to figure out if it's worth killing Yoshi. Gonna, ooh, maybe not. Takes up for mana. Uh, it's Storm Breath. Okay, that has protection from white. 
Uh huh. And Scred? Well, that's a disastrous way for this turn to go. Opponent goes to combat, attacks, attacks. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to block, but I'm not sure we can get back in the game from here. Yeah, so we block, tap our opponent out for their next turn, tap the planeswalkers to send a message. Zags a relic, draws a card. Ooh. Well, that worked out. Because our opponent sacked that relic, we actually got to kill the... Okay. Okay, well, we actually have some chance now. I don't know if it's a good chance, but we actually have some amount of life. Oh, these planeswalkers, though. There's the Karnstruct. All right, come on, land. Heartless Summoning. Now play Heartless Summoning. Play Solemn. Get a land. Play Woe Strider. Goat dies. Well, pass the turn. Opponent adapts. Oh, the Stormbrest could untap, though, and there's still a Chandra opponent for a uh, Frostwalk Bastion. Combat gets in. Hmm. Do we have to block? If we block, we can't kill Chandra. If we don't block... Yeah, I think we have to block and draw Yoshi, maybe. Block. Draw a card. Something good, please? Ugh, painful land. All right. Opponent passes. Whoa, Strider. Huh. So, go to combat. Attack Chandra. Play Aethrios. Play Golos. I think we're dead, though, unfortunately. Storm Breath, Ultimates, seven. All right. Godless Shrine, untapped, down to eight. Whoa, Strider. Yeah, we're dead to, we're dead to Storm Breath here, unfortunately. Wow. Well, we got to see our deck do things. It's going to come up just short because Storm Breath is ridiculous, but we went through multiple Planeswalkers starting on turn three. I mean, our deck did sweet things. Oh, our opponent has, all right. I mean, we're literally just dead on board to Storm Breath ultimating here. Uh, seven mana. Yeah. All right. Well, our deck did sweet things. We didn't win the match, and that might be a theme with A3Os, but we did do sweet things. All right. Against the odds time, we are A3Os. Hmm. A3Os locking in modern. In this hand, we have ramp. It's so exp I guess we got to keep it. It's concerning that it's very expensive, but that's also kind of... <laughs> That's kind of our deck. It's a very expensive deck. We got a ramp spell to go with our expensive things, so I guess we can't really ship it. But it would be nice to draw either more ramp or something a little bit faster. Either mile. Well, I mean, Golos is more ramp once we get to it. Mindstone go. Opponent taking up their vial. Island and passes. Well, all right, that is solemn. That's not a bad draw. Play solemn. Okay, opponent's going to trickster. Yep, tap solemn. Well, we will get a snow-covered plains past the turn. All right, I mean, this has potential. We're actually not that far away from just spinning the Golos wheel. Waterlog Grove for our opponent. Lord of Atlantis. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 17. Well, ooh. Uh, all right, Heartless Summoning. That's a good draw. And then Golos. Opponent Vile's in. All right, more lords. Well, Golos will snag a Mirin. Godless Shrine tapped past the turn. All right, we got the ramp on. Do we live long enough against this onslaught of Merfolk? And does our opponent have a way to make Island Walk relevant? If they make all their stuff unblockable with Spreading Seas, then things get really sketchy. Vile's. A no Holy lords. All right, here comes a big attack. Why don't we block? We draw a card. We drop to nine. Aethrios. Heartless Summoning. Hmm. So if we play Heartless Summoning. I'm going to play Heartless Summoning. Ugh, this man is kind of awkward, isn't it? I don't play Yoshi. Ugh, if we had one more land, we'd be able to sack Yoshi here. But as it sits... We're actually in a pretty sketchy spot where we're dead to basically anything. And because we drew, well, drew slash tutored both of our colorless lands, we can't actually play Aethrios. Oh, do you have anything? Eh, Petty Thief is anything. Yep. All right. Well, that was a lot of lords. Our deck functioned pretty well, but our opponent played a bunch of lords and we did not hit removal. So we get to bring in... 
two dead of winners, and uh, there's not a whole lot else we can bring in, honestly. We can go down to Golos. Boy, if we had one more mana, I think we could have stabilized there. Golos and one Yagmoth. Collective Brutality isn't good enough. All right, let's try it like that. Well, our deck did explosive things just a little short. Our deck is really expensive. And our opponent had triple Lord Draw, which, I mean, that's that's very fast. If our opponent's draw was a little more stumbly, we might have got there that game. But uh, no stumbles. All right, well, we play first. I'll keep it. We got an A3Os. We're working towards... Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we're working towards the A3Os. We'll see. Botanical Sanctum. Aether Vial. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, Prismatic Vista. Crack it. Snow-covered planes. Mindstone go. Uh, opponent. Taking up the vial. Cavern. Sure. I mean, we're not countering things anyway. On Merfolk. And Silvergill reveals Cumana Speaker, which can go into play with the vial. Well, Snow-covered planes. Solemn. Here comes the speaker. Grab a swamp. Pass the turn. Well, how many lords do they have is a big question. If they just go lord, lord, we're super far behind again. Which is kind of what Merfolk does. Vile. Lord. Combat. Attacks. Well, we'll take it. More lands. Well, Prismatic Vista. Crack it. Kind of feels like a petty thief might be coming. Run out our Aetherios. Ugh. Deprive. All right. Yeah, this is getting worse by the instant. Pass the turn. Oh, uh, boot it. Taking up the vial. I mean, our opponents had very good draws both games. They had Ether Vial both games. They had many lords both games. And then game two had the, the counter spell. I don't think this is a easy matchup for us regardless, but those starts are going to be incredibly difficult for our deck to beat. Mindstone, so we're taking... Seven, eight? Yeah, take an eight, down to seven. We draw. Path to exile. Well, um, play Mindstone. Play Yogmoth. Godless Shrine. Pass the turn. There's the Petty Thief. Oh, God. All right, well, we go for the Lord, but I think it's probably a bit late here. So, Poetic gets to bounce our Yogmoth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Untaps. So close. So, so close to being good. Pwn it. So how can we get out of this? I think it's got to just be plant the angel off the top and then our opponent not having more answers. Opponent goes to combat, gets in for a bundle, down to three. Yoshi, unfortunately, one to the revive six. Yeah, Yoshi doesn't do it. We can sack a Mind Stone. Prismatic Vista definitely doesn't do it. Sack a Mind Stone. Swamp and scoop it up. Whoo, close! That was a bit frustrating. Uh, I mean, I don't think this is a great matchup, but ooh, so close to the Platinum Angel. I don't think this is a great matchup, but our opponent had A++ draws both games, so eh. I mean, what can you do? All right. Uh. Against the odds time, we are looking to Aetherios lock people. <laughs> In modern, should be interesting. Well, I mean, this hand's okay. We have our second best ramp spell in Mindstone. We have some Solemn, so we have stuff we can do. No Aetherios, though. Well, let's see what our opponent's doing. Bloodstained Mire. Cracks Bloodstained Mire. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. And... Shriekhorn. All right, so we are getting dredged. Uh, should <laughs> be an interesting game one. Mines don't go. So bad news is winning game one is going to be really hard. Good news is we do have ley lines in our sideboard, so we do have a way to beat dredge, potentially. And you never know. I mean, our lock, I think, can beat dredge. If we get it assembled fast enough. Opponent dredges, but only hits more lands. Maybe this is actually a loam deck? This could be, like, weird loam. Opponent haggles. It's got to be dredge. All right, has a stinkweed. Sure, dredges. Two Narcomoebas. Yeah. Well, Narcomoeba, Narcomoeba. Blast zone. And opponent mills themselves. It's a creeping chill. But no dredger for next turn, so that's good. Well, play the land. 
Salem. Wow, Pony has milled an incredible number of lands. Snow Covered Swamp. Gil. I mean, we're two turns away from Runescar Demon, potentially. And that can get Aetherios or maybe something else, depending on what our situation's like. No Dredger, no Dredger, no Dredger, no Dredger. All right, no Dredger. Hits a Blood Gas, but no Dredger. And the Shriekhorn's out of action. All right. We have hope. We'll see. I mean, our opponent could just have, like, Cathartic Reunion, discard two dredgers or something. And then things get bad fast, but what do you got, opponent? Loams back some lands. Okay. So that's a dredger for next turn. Land gets blood gas, I assume. Ooh, untap land. Cycles Forgotten Cave, going to dredge. Well, there's an Ox of Agonis. No dredger, but Ox is pretty decent. Blood gas returns. Yeah, Ox is pretty big deal for our opponent. About it. Gets in, gets in, hits us. Down to 15. Yeah, we on top. Hmm. Prismatic Fist, uh. You know, crack Prismatic Fist down to 14. Get a land. Run out Yoshi the Morning Star. Pass the turn. And, I mean, we'll see what happens. Opponents should be able to have a pretty good turn here with this Ox. Probably dredging basically the rest of our opponent's deck. Um. Yeah, I guess we attack. Get in there, <laughs> Solemn. <laughs> uh, all right. About it. Untaps. So no dredger in the graveyard, but Ox is in the graveyard. Gonna need to find a way to sack our Yoshi. Oh, I wish we had Aetherios. Opponent. Well, here comes the Ox by the looks. Yeah. So there's the Ox. Discards the hand. Gets to dredge a million times. Uh-huh. 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 Well, so there's a Creepy Chill and a Conflagrate, which is more problematic. Yeah, we're we're pretty close to dead here. So opponent can play a land, which gets Blood Gas, which gets prized Amalgam. Yeah, Dredge in game one is a very very hard to uh very hard to beat deck. So here comes the dorks, and more dorks to follow. Opponent, combat, board full of blood gas. Attacks, attacks, attacks. I mean, we'll kill a Narc Amoeba. Nothing else does anything. Drop to eight. Hmm. Arr. If we could find our combo, we'd have a shot, but it's going to be too slow. Opponent, prized amalgams, comes back. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So we rune Scar Demon. Die. Yeah, I guess we just play Solemn. I mean, I think we're just literally dead here, right? We can kill... Block, block, block. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. All right. No sense in even playing it out. Like, with Conflagrate in the graveyard, we're just, we're dead, and there's nothing we can do about it. So, now we get to play the fun, the fun, fun dredge game, where we go to sideboarding, we bring in Leylines of the Void, we use London Mulligans to try to find Leyline of the Void, and then we see if our opponent has more answers to Leyline of the Void than we have Leyline to the Void. And that's the game. <laughs> so, all right, here we go, opponent. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see how the Mulligan Wars turn out. So, I mean, if we hit one Leyline, we gotta keep it. Ideally, in a perfect world, we end up with two Leylines to fight through a Leyline destruction spell that our opponent will be mulliganing for. And we'll play first. Leyline? No. Mulligan. Leyline? No. Mulligan. Leyline? See, opponent also doing the same thing. No. Uh, Mulligan. I mean, we're, we're committed. We're going all the way. All right, there's a Leyline. Unfortunately, our opponent kept on six, which, which means they should have a Leyline answer. So, well, I mean, we did what we do in the matchup. Godless Shrine, go. Opponent untaps. The bad news is we got absolutely nothing going on we had to go so deep to hit a single a line that uh we're not gonna be doing anything for a bunch of turns so our opponent has a roughly infinite amount of time to uh to destroy the ley line blood crypt untapped opponent thought seizes sure takes our last remaining non-land snow covered swamp go well <laughs> Up to you, Leyline. The awkward thing here is we had to mulligan so f deep that there's a decent chance we lose even if our opponent cannot blow up the Leyline immediately. Because <laughs> we just can't do anything and we got no cards. Uh, I mean, I guess drawing lands are fine. These lands mean if we draw like a Solemn, we'll be able to cast it, which is helpful. 
And apparently our opponent does not have a ley line blower upper at the moment. Opponent. Haggles. Sure. Discards a Narc Amoeba. Passes. Well, hitting lands is good. We need some action now. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Well, I mean, Woe Strider is actually something. Play Woe Strider. That is a threat. I mean, if our opponent just doesn't hit a way to deal with Ley Line, we're not in the worst shape because our opponent's deck just doesn't do anything with a Ley Line out. That is the downside to what our opponent's trying to do. Opponent. And we can sack the goat to scry at some point. Okay, runs out the merchant. And I'll sack Marsh Flats. Get a Godless Shrine tapped. Opponent passes. Well, play the land, go to combat, attack. Opponent thinking about blocking. Opponent takes it. Oh, you pass the turn. I guess this merchant does have some value. Our opponent can <laughs> keep rummaging to try to find a ley line answer. Uh, boot it. All right, discard shenanigans. Draws a card. I mean, we've hit all these land drops, so we actually have a decent chunk of our deck live now. Ugh, untap draw. A three O's. Oh, we need another land. We need another land. Well, we're going to get in with Woe Strider. We're pretty fine with the trade since we'll be able to get back Woe Strider eventually. All right, there's the block. Well, we definitely will sack the goat to scry. Oh, huh? no block? All right, no block. I mean, this is even better. We'd rather wait until after we get a so then we can start coining things. But we do need to close out the game before our opponent uh, <laughs> draws a way to kill this lane line. Pwn it. What you got? Are we haggling again? Or merchanting? Cathartic reunion. Discards two cards. Draws a card. Scalding Tarn. I mean, I guess this does show the power of lane line. <laughs> we mulled a four on the play, and so far, so good. Opponent's passing. Well, let's cash in the goat to scry. We'll keep solemn. Play solemn. Get a land. Ooh. I don't know if we want to keep attacking now. Um, Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait. We have this A3O's coming, and A3O solemn most rider is pretty sweet. All right, opponent's going to haggle. Just keep digging. Discards a lightning axe. Yeah, if we get Aetherios down, then until we find something better, worst case, we can, we can keep Solomon every turn. Coin on it, sack it, etc. Drawing cards, getting lands, and that should find us in, uh, in this, find us something to close out the game. Blast Zone. Well, technically, that is a way to kill a line, but it is going to take our opponent a long time. Guess they can play another merchant. All right, opponent. Passes. Well, ooh. Uh, yeah, let's A3O's. The Shroud Veiled. And this means we get to start the value train, hopefully. Now we need a Yoshi and we get to just hardlock our opponent. Well, pass the turn. Coin up our Solemn. Aw, is it getting killed? All right, opponent's going to Lightning Exit. Well, we will sack to Scry. Draw a card. I mean, that is kind of... The downside, I guess, of of A3O's is it is a bit slow. Yeah, all right. More Solemns. That's not our I win card, but it's enough value that I don't think we can pass it up. All right, pass the turn. We sort of don't want to run out the second ley line until after our opponent uses this blast zone, I think. Yeah, opponent takes it up. Sure. Untaps. Bloodstained Mire. Are we hard casting dredge cards? Cracks Bloodstain Mire. Opponent's on to seven. I mean, maybe we should have kept attacking with Woe Strider. It's such a sweet combo piece, though, with this setup. Boat it. Oxvagonus. All right, sure. Discards draws. This does mean our opponent's not going to be using Blasto next turn. Boat it. Passes. You know, untap. Marsh Flats. Crag Marsh Flats. Get a Godless Shrine. Tap. Solemn. Get a land. Pass the turn. Go to red step. Do we actually get to put a counter on our Solemn? <laughs> Can we get a coin counter? <laughs> we're so close. We just need Yoshi. If we can find our... Like, we're, we're, like, we're like Mario. Mario 3. Actually, no. Super Mario World. <laughs> we're... Ooh. That's a coin counter? Huh. Yeah, I guess that's a coin. Bought it. Well, the value train's running. The value train's running. Now we need Yoshi, and we got the lock. Opponent. Cathartic reunion. Digging, digging, digging. Bloodstained buyer. 
Opponent passes. Well, I mean, we'll sex Alum. Oh, come on. Cast us to dredge that. Yes. Hard cast creeping jail. Opponent goes to dead. Well, sex Alum. We get back Solemn. We get a land to thin the deck. We draw a card. We scry. Yo, she. Definitely do not want more lands. All right. Untap. Hmm. I don't even know if we want Heartless Summoning at this point. I think, though, I think we will play Leyline just to turn on Aetherios, and Opponent scoops it up. Okay. Well, we didn't quite get to the full lock, but you can see where the deck is going with Aetherios and Most Rider being able to reuse that card every single turn. Like, we, we got to where we were trying to go. We just didn't get the Yoshi to actually hard lock our opponent, but, well, all right. Hmm. I mean, this is not the most interesting matchup. <laughs> how it played out that game is exactly how it's going to play out again. We're going to mulligan and try to hit late lines. Because if we do, we got a shot. If we don't, we don't have a shot. Thankfully, our opponent's playing like shenanigans and other stuff that actually isn't super effective against our graveyard hate. Ooh, ooh okay. Well, we got a late line. We'll keep. Little sketchy because it's only one ley line, but... This hand is actually really oddly close to our combo. We get to Ley Line, Heartless Summoning, Heartless Summoning. That's going to make stuff like Aetherios cost two mana. Ley Line of the Void. Yeah. All right. Do you got the answer, opponent? Scalding Tarn. Crack Scalding Tarn. Blood Crypt. And... Opponent's all about these Thought Seizes, but the Thought Seizes aren't really that great. I mean, I guess they're fine, but they're not that great. All right. Opponent takes a Aetherios. Well, Prismatic Vista go. Ooh, our mana's actually a little obnoxious here. We're going to need one more one more white source, I guess. Opponent. Wooded Foothills. Cracks it. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. Down to 12. Hmm. So, I'm guessing this is our opponent blowing up Leyline into turn. Oh, crack Prismatic Vista. Snow-Covered Swamp. Untap. Uh. Huh. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should get Snow-Covered Plains. Snow-Covered Plains. Heartless summoning, go. Well, come on, white manas. Opponent, do you have the answer? Oh, not yet. All right, opponent on taps. Leyline still intact. Mountain. Stain Queen. <laughs> yes, that's fine. Oh, come on, white source. That's a white source. Uh, heartless summoning. Snow covered plains, go. Oh, we need an Aetherios. We need an Aetherios. We're so close, Potent. Cathartic Reunion. Discard some stuff. Goes digging. Did they find the answer? Wooded Foothills. Golos would be great. Because our uh, our Well Strider's a little awkward at the moment. Opponent hits us down to 17. All right, so play Yoshi. Urborg. Woe Strider. Dies. Pass the turn. But that's okay because, because we can get back the Woe Strider. We're like an Aetherios away from just winning. Opponent untaps. Winning by locking our opponent out of the game. Okay, Cycle's Forgotten Cave. I mean, I guess that Thalsies was kind of good. Because it is keeping our opponent from getting locked. Opponent passes. Oh my goodness, it's Aetherios. Okay. Is that... Oh, we need one... Okay. One... Wait, how much mana is this? So this will be two. This is two. All right. I think this does it. I think we locked him. Play Aetherios. Unless our opponent has interaction, we play Aetherios. Okay, go to combat. We got to wait one more turn. We got to wait one more turn because we... Okay, opponent's going to block. That's fine. Opponent blocks. Kills Yoshi. Tap you out. Whoa, Strider escape. And we got him. We got him. This is it. This is it. This is it. Coin up our Woe Strider. So now our opponent's just hard locked out of the game. We get to tap them out every turn for the rest of the game until we win. We got another Yoshi in hand. So we just put the coin counter on it. And this is what we were trying to do. We needed our ley line to protect us. But this is this is what we envisioned with the deck. This is it. Coming together. Pwned it. And now our opponent just never gets to untap. They're just hard locked out of magic. Aetherios lock. Yoshis. I mean, we leaned out our ley line. But this is, this is the plan coming together and taking down a degenerate combo deck. All right. I mean, this is it. This is it. That is pretty sweet. I mean, Leyline did buy us the time, but this is with four lands. The power of multiple Heartless summonings to ramp us. Opponent's thinking about something. Not 100% sure what. <laughs> oh, opponent just cannot find it. Are they just going to... Huh. 
opponent might just be running down the clock. I mean, I kind of take that as a, a badge of honor. When your opponent gets salty enough that they run out the clock on you, <laughs> that means you're doing something right. Well, opponent's down to three minutes, and I guess that shows the power of Aethrios. <laughs> that might be a stretch. It shows the power of Leylide, but Aethrios is salt-inducing. And our opponent doesn't even know they're hard locked. All I know is they're tapped out for a turn. So just in case, uh, just in case you haven't seen the combo, what we would do here, uh, here's how it works while we're waiting for our opponent's clock to quickly run down. So what we do during our turn, opponent can't untap this turn because the last turn's uh, Yoshi. And then we will cast Yoshi for two mana. Doing it, play Yoshi. When you go attacking, whatever. S make sure we have a stop at our end step. End step, we will put a coin on our Yoshi. Then we will sack Yoshi to Woe Strider after we get the coin. That will tap our opponent out again and let us tap more permanence if our opponent like made a land drop or whatever. Yoshi will come back into play. Then the next turn, we do the same thing. We get to uh, Yoshi will be on the battlefield. We can attack with everything. Opponent would probably be dead. Uh, if they're not dead, end of turn, coin on Yoshi, sack Yoshi to Woe Strider, keep our opponent tapped out. Technically, we just tap our opponent out of the game forever, and we can still play cards, we can still attack, so eventually we'll get the job done, and this also deals with creatures, theoretically, like depending on how much of our opponent's stuff we have to tap down, but our opponent skips their entire untapped step, so creatures aren't untapping, lands aren't untapping, artifacts aren't untapping, all that stuff takes tap down, so uh, that's the that's the big goal of the deck, and this is a pretty good example of how it could work. Uh, turn six, not super, super fast, but with two heartless summonings, we can cast things super cheaply and uh, get us set up. So, well, opponent will be dead in a minute and 19 seconds, but a win's a win. And opponent out of time, and we get the win. Well, we're doing something right if we're making opponent salty enough to uh, <laughs> just make us sit here for 10 minutes and time out. So, sweet. That's Aetherios. So what did we learn this week about Aetherios in Modern? And overall, we went 2-4 and four with the deck. Eh, 33.3 for Infinity Match Win Percentage. Eh, below average for it against odds deck, but that's fine. I expected going into it that Aetherios, being a 6-mana play that kind of doesn't really impact the board too much immediately, probably going to be a tough sell, but I'm actually really happy with how our deck turned out. Even though we didn't win that many matches, we won a decent amount of games. So even in our losing efforts, we were winning games, doing cool things with Aetherios, and we have a really spectacular lock. Like the Aetherios Yoshi lock, that is really sweet. And all of our other cards are really synergistic as well. The only downside is the deck can be a little bit slow. If we have Heartless Summoning or Mind Stone into like Solemn and start ramping, we can get there. But we do have some ads that are just really, really slow. We have so many six drops, but it's kind of a necessary evil because Aetherios and Yoshi, both six drops. What can we really do about that? So I feel like given the constraints of Aetherios and how narrow Aetherios is. So uh, one of the biggest challenges I found with Aetherios, trying to build around it, is if you just want to like value stuff from your graveyard, Micaeus, Nightmare Shepherd, things like that are just way better. If you're just trying to get like general kind of panharmonic on value, for Aetherios to be the best option, you really need something like Yoshi. One specific thing or a small number of specific things that you want to use again and again and again. Because if you just want general value, like oh I get back my whatever random enter the battlefield creature, my multi Drifter or whatever, you might as well be playing Micaiah's or Nightmare Shepherd. Something like that is going to be a way easier and more efficient way to uh, have that kind of value. But Aetherius, you need the lock. You need that one specific creature that wins a game. And I feel like this deck, while we are a three-card combo piece that has two six drops as their combo pieces. It is pretty sweet at what it does. And we did pull off the lock a reasonable amount of the time. And the lock itself is pretty unbeatable. Although we did get scratched a lot <laughs> and, and have our stuff killed in response. That's another kind of downside of Aetherios that I didn't really think through all the way, but there's not much you can do about it. But you can have your creature killed in response to the coin counter going on it, which is a little bit annoying. Our scred matchup in specific, that happened again and again and again. But before we finally won the game where it was happening. So I feel like the deck was sweet. Aetherios is sweet. Kind of bottom to middle bottom in terms of level of competition. I'd say... Uh, three and a half 
four, maybe, uh, maybe even three out of 10 as far as how likely are to just win. And that lines up with our 33.3% match win percentage. But the wins are really cool. We get to play a lot of fun cards, just like Woe Striders and Goloses and Solubs. Our good draws can be really powerful. Just the Heartless Summoning, Solemn, Woe Strider, into Aethrios, into Ashen Rider, Double Exile, put a Koi Counter on it, Double Exile again. Like, when things come together, it's really awesome. And then the other games, the bad games, are mostly us just getting, like, run over by aggro. So at least they're over quickly. So that's the upside, too. Like, when we're going to lose, we just lose fast, get out to the next one, hopefully do something cool. So anyway, that's Aethrios Log for Modern. That's our Against Odds for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.